how can we make sure that the guest experience is awesome on every visit? How can we ensure that that happens every single time they come? So we're going to answer some of those questions on this series of videos. And it starts with our six steps of service in increasing the client retention, which is ultimately what we, what we want to do. We want to make sure that they love their experience and that they can't wait to come back. What this is, is the foundation of the business aspect of making sure that we deliver what we promise. What you want to prepare yourself for, because I'm going to ask you some questions at the end of each segment, is what is your takeaway from this segment? What value did you get? How can you use this in your everyday uh, salon life? I'm going to ask you to put some information down in the comments at the end of this little segment, so you want to be thinking about that as you're watching this next clip. All right, here we go. Enjoy. And the reason that is, is because we want retention, which leads me to this PRB. What's that mean? Pre-book pre percentage. So um, the queen of pre-book is Lisa. And the reason I say that is her never, number never drops. Like I admire her for this. Her number never drops. Even when she's like the end of season, she's like, you better get on next season because you're not going to have an appointment. And, you know, I started um, emulating that because I was like, well, they don't need to know how busy I'm going to be or whether it's booked now. I need to get it on the book now. And then what I do now is, you know, our seasonal people are coming back. And so you can get the appointments you want. We need to get them on the book through January through that's that's things that I've been saying. But the reason for the pre book is you're guaranteed to have a client. You're guaranteed it's there. If you don't pre-book it, they get a third less haircuts a year. They see you a third less a year because it takes them a couple weeks to get, oh, I need my hair done. Okay, let me call and book it. It takes a couple weeks. So if you take that five times a year, you're not seeing them 10 weeks out of the year that you could. Does that make sense? For you, it's very So it's really important to be having that discussion. But also, another thing is, do you want them looking bad? They're asking you, how often do I need to maintain this? So when they're when in your consultation, that's where it starts, is if they're not gonna come but every six months, then why did you give them a route? Does that make sense? If you give them a route, they can't come every six months. Otherwise, they're looking bad for five of them, saying you do their hair. So how are they gonna maintain it? What is the maintenance on that? And get them back in for the appropriate maintenance. I talked about this with one of you, a root retouch. How often should they come back? Four to six. Four to six. Yep. It's not 12. It's not 20. It's four to six. Everybody's hair grows an average. So a root retouch, four to six. Short haircuts. How often should they be coming back? Early. Early. Four weeks. Men are usually on like a three-week cycle. Okay, so if you're doing men's cuts, it touches the ear in three weeks. The shorter the hair, the more maintenance it needs. So four weeks, medium length, six weeks, long hair, eight weeks. Some of them like to go twice a year, so 12 weeks. They really do need a trim more than once a year. Okay. Um, highlights, how often should they be coming? Six to eight. Six to eight. If it's a heavy blonde highlight. They got to come sooner. The more the more root they have, you know, visible change, the sooner they have to come in. This is what you're doing for them. And what I say is, I want you to always look good. I don't want you to look good for three weeks and then two weeks you hate your hair. So sometimes I adjust what I'm doing to meet their budget. Well, I can only come every five weeks. I can't come every three. Okay, then we need to do this. Or, well, I really like that look. Okay, then you need to come in this often. You're the professional. The doctor doesn't tell you to come back, you know, and check your heart when you feel like it. They say, I need to see you in six months to have a follow-up on your heart. You're the professional. I know it's not heart surgery. I get it. But they're looking to you to know what to do, when to do it, how often. If you add a new service, they don't know about it. They don't know that highlights are different maintenance than a root retouch or that short haircut is different maintenance than long haircut. They don't know. That's your job to inform them. Does that make sense? I'm just looking at you like, did I miss something? No, no, I think um, especially with um, the 
this cycle, and it's even more so <clears throat> important for you, because you don't have an open book for five days a week. And, you know, right now, you don't even know where you can get people, and you kind of have to work people in when you're looking at the future. So it's very important that you pick a date for them in the future, in the beginning of this, so that there is a time slot, and that you're, and you don't have to say, because I'm new, I don't have a lot of time. I only have a few availabilities, is the truth. And that's a good thing. So let them know that. Um, and the importance of that. So if you only, if it takes about 200 clients to fill up an appointment book on a regular cycle, about 200. So that's your target, that's where you want to get to. If you are not pre-booking them, you're going to need about 250. So the problem is, if you're not doing pre-book, you have to keep getting new clients or other clients and to fill those gaps in for the ones that the people keep missing. So if they're not coming every four to six weeks, who's going to go in those slots where they're supposed to be there? You have to get more people because you don't have people coming in on a regular basis. Also, people are out there with your name on their head not looking good because they're past that cycle. So they're marketing you in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And you don't want that. So that's why it has such value. And that starts at the very beginning, the very first conversation you're having with them, not the end, not pre-book her and book her in six weeks. That starts up front. And they need to see you every four weeks. Well, the conversation when we get up front on experience day needs to look different. It really does. When you get up there, you need to be telling the front desk what's happening. And then you walk away hands out that you have handed this guest off with everything the front desk needs. When I walk up front, I'm like, I got to go wash my hands. I have another client coming. And I say to the front desk, okay, so she's coming back in four weeks. Can you please book her for X, Y, and Z? Whatever we've already talked about. I'm not leaving the front desk to question what to put on the book. Is she getting highlight sex time? Is she getting a retouch? Is she getting a haircut? Is it just a blowout? I've already discussed with them what they need. When I get up front, I say, this is what she's doing. If I don't have time to pull product because I am in a rush, I then say, can you also put on, we've discussed hydrate and this and that, whatever, whatever we've discussed, she's also purchasing. Or if I don't have a confirmed by the time I walk up there, I try to say, um, she was interested in X, Y, and Z. But I'm telling the front desk, I'm handing it to them on a golden platter, please finish this for me. That's what they're trained to do. So when you, when you go, and sometimes, honestly, if there's more than one person up there, I just go behind the desk and I book it myself because I want to make sure it's on there. And I see that they're busy. So I'm going to pre-book my guest while she's finishing the other guest, and then I'm going to walk away. Does that make sense? So those things, like the conversation isn't left to them. You're telling them what you want to see with this guest, but not just there. You've already discussed it. You've already like, yep, okay, so I need it. And then they can put it on your book. You know what I'm saying? Once you have an open book. If you don't, then you need to say, can you book them on a Monday of an experience day in six weeks, please? And they'll find the experience day for you if you're not sure what day that is, if that's the only day you have. Okay, but tell them what you want to see. Not leaving it to them. That's, that's their job to close, not to recommend. They have no idea. They don't do hair. So if she says, well, you know, you should come back in six weeks, they're like, who are you? Right? It comes from you. So when you walk up, that's what the closing conversation your sixth step should look like. That is your sixth step that close is when to come back and here's what we used. You know, she's interested in this, that, and the other. Usually the sale tactic comes up there because I forget. And they're like, oh, by the way, do you want another one? Because it's buy two, get one. And I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, that's right. Man, I had that in my pocket and I forgot all about it. So you know what I mean? Like by the time you get there, they might be buying a third because you forgot about the buy two, get one. That's really where you want it to be. Does that make sense? And they believe in you because you've told them now, this is what I'm supposed to do. If you don't tell them, oh, just call me when you're ready. Guess what happens in four weeks when their hair looks like crap? You didn't do a good job. You didn't do a good job. That's part of your job. Even though it looked beautiful the day they left, in four weeks when it looks like crap and you didn't tell them, you didn't do the good job because you didn't tell them. You don't ever want to say it. I hear it all the time. Do I book your next appointment? Or do you just want to call? Because people don't want to be with the uncomfortableness of a no, so they put that in there so that if there's a no, it softens the blow. You know, 
Calling becomes an option. Don't give it an option. Right. You, you want to see them then. You're recommending what's, what's valuable. Of course nobody wants to commit to the future. Nobody wants to. People have so much going on in their lives. To make one more commitment is a real pain in the ass. They don't want to do that. They don't want to commit to you know, brushing their teeth tomorrow morning, let alone six weeks from now. They have so many things. So to get them to commit is, is part of it. And that's just like when you go to the dentist. Your dentist wants your teeth to look good. you got to see them in six months or four months or whatever it is for you for your cleaning. You don't leave there without that rebook. So that happens. And this also starts now, so you don't have to wait until experience day. We've done over 200 love blowouts between you. And you're, if you haven't done them, you will be doing them this week. But between our team, over 200, there's a lot more coming up on the book. And some of you have already talked to those people about other things that they want. You were doing a haircut, you got some tinsel in on the woman here last week, I saw that. And, some additional services that they want. So, or they're talking to you about, hey, I might like to get some color sometime. I'd like to, uh, you know, get a haircut. And that's a great opportunity. That's an open invitation for you. This is a relationship that you're building now. So this isn't just a blow up, get them out, let them go rebuild their house and come back. This is a lifelong relationship that you get to build right now with them forever. And not only that, they will remember you forever anyway because you were there for them at a time of need in a way that they needed it and didn't know they needed it. So there's already a, a, a foundation of relatedness and love and trust that when they start talking to you about that, you're doing put the tinsel in their hair and cutting their hair, and, you know, giving them all the little extra accoutrements or, or setting them up for the future. There's a whole new, it's not like someday you need to start that building. This is separate from that. That's right. That's going on right now. And it's a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity. They could take love home with them. They could take the bottle, the hydrate shampoo, have a little love in their shower. They, you represent love to them, a love blow up. So that's all a part of that, too. So it's happening now. And if you haven't, because you're going to do it probably early, and you'll have some that they've done this week. So you've done a ton, and you've done a ton, and you've done a ton. So and they're going to keep going because they just keep working and working and working. That's awesome. Yeah. And Monday, our experience day will be blowouts, we decided. We're just going to do a day full of blowouts because they're all over the place. And so we're just going to continue that for this experience day. So you're comfortable doing blowouts. I want you to really focus on your connection with the guest, education on the guest, and all of the other things because your blowouts don't need work. At this point, you might get a new thing or something that you need help with, but it's not like deer in the headlights. I don't know what I'm doing. You've done blowouts. So I really want you to step up your hairstylist game. You are the professional. Be the professional. Trust yourself. You're, 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 and, and, you know, you want to add curls? Add curls. Talk about the curling yarn. Talk about how you curl it. You want to smooth it out? Smooth it out. Like, and work on all the other stuff that you don't think about when you, when you deer in the headlights, I have to cut this hair. Sound good? Um, so... There are some other measures that help us with um, the six steps, but I don't want to overwhelm you with numbers because that's we're not numbers people. So I really would like to see these focuses with your love blowouts, with your um, experience day. Get them to buy into you so that they're here with you. Do you know what I mean? They're buying into you. They're not, you're not selling them anything. They're buying into, you care, you want to fix their hair, you want their needs met. That's what they're buying into. Don't make the conversation anything separate than who you already are. So when you're talking to them about a product, genuinely share what it is that you love about that product. Authentically. You don't have to sound any other way than the way you talk. I love this because the smell is so great. And it leaves the hair feeling so good. Whatever your shtick is on each product, that's all you need to share. Yes. You don't have to you know, create... Lisa's conversation or her conversation, use yours, whatever it is for you, when you're just talking to somebody in your family about a product. It's the same way. Just be genuine, authentic to you when you're talking to them. So it doesn't sound weird. Yeah. Don't have to have it it on things. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything else on these two? No, I think it's great just to start with these two. Okay. Things. So if you have questions how to find them or track them, these are what's posted so you can see it on the postings. Your names are on those lists. And the moment you do one client, it hits the list. Um, so you'll see that. Um, 
the total guest count number that I gave you and the other numbers, you can learn to pull yourself if you wanna see how you're doing over a period of time. Like let's say you wanna see how you did for six months. You can pull these numbers, you can have access to these numbers. Your front desk probably already knows how to do it, but I will take the time to show you how to do this at another time. But um, you can track these for yourself. If nothing else, you should be tracking what your numbers are so you can see how well you're doing. So just take the number off the um, report and put it in your phone for each week or pay, it's pay period. So it's two weeks at a time. Just take that number and track it for yourself to see, am I doing any better? And then what do I need to do to get this better? What am I missing? Because it's, it's your report card. It's kind of like, can I do some extra credit? <laughs> okay. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about is um, intros on experience day. Okay, it's that time again, three of them, your takeaways, ready, go. I'm waiting, three of them, comments down below, good job.